because the crystal <clears throat> by itself runs down. It means the energy fades and one then must reinvigorate or recharge the battery that is here. Ice. Ice crystals are hexagonal. The normal pattern in the air atmosphere without exceeding pressure, without the atmospheric deviations that are required for the multiple other forms, we come up with an identical hexagonal pattern in space. Six-sided. Now, we have in quartz the space group symmetry that fits the water molecule symmetry of an ice crystal. When we structure water with mind or with a quartz crystal, we build an analogous pattern in space, be it though a fluid, to receive by vibrational means, by resonance transfer, the energy that is contained in the crystal. I'm giving you now precisely the technical backbone on which a science of treatment can be given to those practitioners who will use this in the future. We're dealing with real events. This is not an illusion. Why cut a natural crystal? The answer is this crystal has had to accommodate itself to the forces that nature had around it. So it created in its outer form a variation in structure, in other words, a surface structure, not in the angles. These variations cause a distortion in the energy pattern. These variations create a anharmonic secondary vibrations. I cut these away by lapidary means I bring into this form a fundamental core, the tree of life, which was the initial four-sided crystal. I'm now adding the additional shapes that we will have for the entire pattern of forms we will work with. Could I have one of your little crystals? Isn't she a wonderful assistant? <laughs> she brought everything out and put it all nicely there for everyone to see. Here is a natural crystal as nature has conceived it and here is the primary four-sided healing crystal. Nature builds according to the forces of that are around her. The clustering as this develops and grows in space but it is also controlled by the secondary growths that take place and these dissipate the forces that a crystal can accumulate and release. When you cut away the form until you bring it to this shape, you then have an instrument that will attune to the fundamental vibratory system in our body, water itself. The reason for color that you see in the quartz is due to two sources. One, the smoky quartz comes about from radiation damage. The quartz grew in an atmosphere of radioactive vapors. When radiation was there in that atmosphere, the unit cells were not grown in the right way, and so you have what is called a negative ion vacancy. 
that means that silica is pushed out of its normal unit cell position and is displaced. So that forms then an F center or a color center, and that causes a absorption of light in the visible spectrum to take place. It absorbs throughout the whole spectrum, and that is why it's smoky or grayish in color. So more energy is being absorbed in the crystal, especially in the vi visible. This also applies to the psychic and subtle energies of the body, meaning that when you work with a smoky quartz, you can draw an enormous volume of energy, of field, out of the body and clear it through the crystal. It is a wonderful psychic sponge. It's a means for sponging out unwanted vibrations. Amethyst has a small quantity of either iron or manganese. These are in the waters in which the soluble silicic acids were growing, and from that you have then the color of amethyst. Topaz is basically manganese, the yellowish color I have now. You can artificially color quartz by heating it and exposing it to radiation at the same time. The heating increases the movement of the crystalline lattices. The radiation then causes the defect lattices or the coloration that one wants. You can bleach a colored stone by love. I can't tell you the number of people who have called me and said my stone is changing color. And that is true. Your energy, the attachment you have, will give you a change in the interlattice spacing and if there is discontinuity in the lattice, they will, these will be erased and the crystal will start to clear, especially the milky white or the little striations in structures. Anger on your part will cause internal flaws to take place. And crystals, when you hold them in anger, at times will shatter. You will see them just break apart. When used imprudently, meaning you want to control or manipulate a person, that crystal will release its tip. And if you persist in a practice that is not good, you will lose that crystal. That is a program that we have put in because we have designed these only for the good of a person, to serve, to help, or to heal. I never had formal education in learning to read. I taught myself to read. And that came about when I was six. I was in bed with pneumonia and Instead of just becoming upset over myself, being incapacitated, struggling for breath, I asked my parents to buy me the book of knowledge. I looked at the pictures, found the appropriate words. In the matter of about a month, I was reading, and I finished before I went into the first grade the book of knowledge. Uh, all of my life, I've had an insatiate appetite for information. I remember in my early school years, in grammar school, 
I would go to the library and I would systematically take sections of books out on different subjects and go through every book. I was encyclopedic in the information I would store. And then what surprised me and terribly saddened me, I found this tremendous contradiction in words from what one person said and another one had put down. I said, these words are not making sense. Why does one man say this and another person say that? And the two did not match, especially in the field of religion, of theos theology. And it's so simple. If we take, for example, the reading of the Bible, the Bible is a hidden document. It is a document designed for man to go beyond word. It is designed for man and woman to experience the teaching, not from the word, but from one you get through your own body. And I learned how to be the Bible instead of reading it. And once I brought that experience through my own body, and that was it when I was in the grammar school. I would go to Mass in the morning, and then I would start asking questions of our Lord. Dear Jesus, why do these people tell me one thing and I read an entirely different thing? Now, what is the truth? I went within and let the teacher speak within me. I wrote this down and then tried to dialogue with the priest, with the nuns, with my own parents. And what I got was a rebuff. This is not true. You must believe this. You must do this. This is the truth. I maintained silence, built my own belief system, and it was based on love. When you project love, well-being, that energy flows into that person <clears throat> and brings life, a sustaining life, to that individual. That is why those we love, we must periodically, each day, <clears throat> become one with them. <clears throat> my wife, my dear, wonderful wife, has practically demanded I give her a call <clears throat> each day. The reason and a very sound, practical one, is we need each other. And if I become too deeply absorbed in the work in the laboratory, a process of separation takes place. A linking, a bond, must be continually refreshed. And all that takes is a moment of quiet, withdrawal of breath, and a phone call, and that continuum of vibration is maintained and becomes an essential link to keeping that love bond, which is so important in a marital relationship. I'm happy to say that I've been romancing my wife for over 40 years, and I've yet to learn what a woman is. <laughs> <laughs> to the eyes of a man, a woman is the most mysterious object we have on the earth plane. The moment you think you know a woman, they disappear. But 
if you give them love, they blossom like a glorious rose and everything comes out and it's wonderful.